Hey everybody, it's Guy, that KilterGuy.com. Have you ever wanted to put one of those little half doors in somewhere, maybe to divide off a room from your pets or something? And you went looking around town. Bet you couldn't find one, could you? That's because you gotta make your own. Well, guess what? We're gonna show you how to do that, coming up next. Okay, hey everybody, we're back. And what we're gonna show you today is how to make your own little half height door. Uh, there's a lot of you know good uses for these. We're gonna use this one today because a friend of mine asked me to make this because they have a new baby and they wanna keep them out of the laundry room, but they don't wanna actually close the whole laundry room, room off. Their cat goes in and out of there. So it's a perfect example to do um, our own cut down door. Now, of course, what we need to start with is a door, and in this case, you wanna use a hollow core door for the interiors. Um, make sure you don't get one that's too thick for your door jam. This one we picked up at the local Habitat store for a whole $7. If you wanna start with one cheap like that, or you can cut your own down. Now, we're gonna need a few things to do this project. Of course, we're gonna need a skill saw. Here I've got a straight edge and some clamps. Uh, we're probably gonna need a T-square to get a nice straight line across there. Pencils, eventually we're gonna need this speed square to do a 45, tape measure, palm sander, safety gear, some wood glue, and we are gonna use a um, finish nailer to speed this up a little bit, but you can do it just by gluing. What I've done here is I've set up a little cutting table and I put a couple of two by fours on here because if you just set it up on two saw horses and you go to cut this, unless you got somebody holding it, probably on both ends, uh, you'd need about two people really. Once you get to the end of the cut, your cut piece is gonna just flop off and probably splinter. Doesn't work very well, so if you're by yourself especially, set up this little jig. Then what we have to do is, we gotta get the depth set on our saw so that we don't cut through our two bys. So you can do it a couple different ways. You can come to the end of your, your door and just set your depth so that you can see the blade is just barely gonna cut into your two by and then you're good. My saw actually has a, let's see if I can show this on the screen here. It actually has a depth gauge on this DeWalt skill saw that I, I've had this thing, thing for a long time, but it's a great saw. So I've set my depth at one and a half inches because this is a one and three eighths inch thick door. Then what I did is, one of the best ways to get a really good straight cut is to use a straight edge like this, but you obviously can't set this right on your cut line. So we did a little test cut over here, and I used the, the uh, T-square that we have to make a nice straight line there so I know this is square. Made a little test cut. I know I'm gonna throw this part of the door away. You may be keeping it. You may want a top half and a bottom half. If not, do a little test cut like this, and then you can measure this and find out how far away from your line that you need to put this cutting guide. And in our case, I want the saw to cut to the right of the line that I'm gonna draw. Now, I should point out this door is brand new, but it has a hole for the lock set. Doesn't have hinges uh, chiseled out or routed out yet. But what you gotta do is figure out which is your top and your bottom. Now most doors are gonna have the knob a little bit, uh, quite a bit actually, lower than center. Center on this door, for example, is 40 inches. This is an 80 inch door. So it's got it four inches lower. What you might wanna do if you're replacing your door like we are is just go measure it, make sure you get it right side up. You don't wanna cut the wrong side off your door. So now, we also had to decide how tall we want it. 
Well, we're going to put that little shelf on top of here and we don't really want our knuckles to be hitting that all the time so we decided to make this one 40 inches. That'll give us that little bit of clearance but it's still not too tall. And then what you've got to do is um, make your two marks at 40 inches. And then we said that because this is the part we want to keep, we want to cut to this side of the line that we're going to draw. Let's make it good and visible so we don't have a hard time seeing that. And then we said we're going to make this part an inch and a half off of our line. So, I can do that again. I'm good at that. Inch and a half. All right. <laughs> Got to have a little humor in here somewhere. Okay, let's see. An inch and a half there. Inch and a half here. And we can go ahead and clamp this. Now we're using these quick grip, quick grip, I can say that good too. We're using these quick grip, grip clamps. You can use whatever you got, but these are really handy. You just slide these to where you need them and squeeze down and that quick, you get it clamped. Okay, now that you've got this lined up and ready to go, we're ready. We've got our depth set on the saw. We've got our lines marked. The cutting guide is clamped in place. Now we need our safety gear. Mickey Mouse ears. Okay, as you can see, nothing went flying off the table. This system works really well. Now I'm going to show you this bottom half here. In case you're wondering what's inside of a hollow core door. It is hollow, but as you can see, it actually has some actually has some cardboard pieces in here. They're kind of in a waffle type pattern, and that's what keeps the uh, uh, the two pieces sandwiched and held apart just right. We're ready to now work on this part. But to reinforce this, we can't just put this up the way it is right now. We've got to get some reinforcement in this area here. See what we're looking at. We've got a nice wide solid piece over here for the knob section and a narrow piece over here. The middle part is just cardboard. We should better just push that out of the way. So now we need to cut a piece that's going to go in from here to here and we'll glue that in place. So we'll get a measurement. I'll go cut that piece and we'll install it next. Okay, I've cut the piece of wood that we need to go in here. And you can see it's, it's going to fit in here nicely. And then what I've done already is I've used this wood to just kind of tap the cardboard pieces backwards. They moved out of the way pretty easy. Yeah, we might. I think we're deep enough on all of them. So now we're just going to glue this in. Okay, we've got the board glued up. So let's go ahead and insert it. We'll make a little bit of a mess here. Try not to go too far because it's going to be a bear to climb inside that door and bring it back out. So we'll gently ease it down here. And we want to get it pretty flush, maybe just slightly proud in case this cut has any wavy spots, but with our guide it shouldn't have. So grab a hammer 
Now when I get a hammer, I get a hammer. No, this is the first thing I could find, but all we need is a little tapping here. Get that pretty flush. We're gonna call that good. Now you can see we've filled out the hollow core. It's now solid on the end where we're gonna install our shelf. Now we're gonna nail this and we're using a little Porter Cable finish nailer here with our super quiet California Air Tools compressor. If you want a quiet air compressor, check out my video review on that thing. That thing is so quiet, I use it in customers' homes and they can barely tell that it's even running. Love it. Okay, we've got the wood in there. Let's just go ahead and nail it. And that's going to take care of it for right now. If you were just gluing this and clamping it, I'd let it dry overnight. But we've nailed it, and that's going to speed things up. So we're going to go ahead and put the shelf on. Now let me wipe this glue off here. Okay, now this shelf we're going to put on here. What we did is we just simply cut a piece of 1x6 material and made some 45 degree corners. The way we figured that out, uh, first of all, I should point out, make sure that you cut your shelf. <laughs> then your door, because you've got door stop on both sides. And if you don't, this is not gonna fit in there. So measure your door stop thickness. It's usually about three quarter. Ours was, it can be thinner, but we made ours two inches less width than the width of the door. That way it'll have plenty of clearance. Then you can just set it in here and kind of figure out where you want your 45s. Go cut them, and then come back and I would go ahead and sand it. We'll go ahead and sand it. Um, this is my favorite sander, by the way. I'll probably do a review on this. This is a Bosch, a random orbital sander. I also own Porter Cables, Makita's. I've owned most of them. This so far has been my favorite. Now what I usually do, I've already done half of this board. I sanded the entire surface to clean it up. And then I usually soften these edges because you don't want sharp edges that's gonna scrape you and cut you and, and it can splinter more. So I soften all the little corners everywhere. So we'll go ahead and do this side. Okay, I think that's looking good on that. Now, really, the only step left is to go ahead and install this on here. Make sure you figure out which way your door is going to swing because a lot of times if it swings, if it's set to where it's close to a wall and you make it swing out like so and it hits the wall, it's not even gonna open all the way. So make sure you, if you put one of these on here, make sure you put it on the right side so that it swings towards the wall and this sticks out away from the wall. Other than that, we basically just want to find our center and glue it, shoot some nails into it let that dry, and then we're gonna put some little braces in here. So let's go ahead and put some glue on this. Line it up here, and I know that it's, if we hold it down to these two bys, that's gonna give us a guide on the back side. So. Okay, next step is to create a couple of braces we're gonna put in here. You can do it as elaborate or as simple as you want. You can do a simple triangle or you can make it a scroll shape. We'll do that next. 
Okay, now I've got the pieces cut, and as you can see, all we did was cut some simple little pieces like this with, a, again, a 45. We left a little bit here and softened all the edges so that they'll fit in here like this. So all we have to do now is glue them, and I'm going to go ahead and put some fasteners through here with a finished nail, or you could use screws. It actually would be pretty strong that way. If you do that, be sure and pre-drill it. But we're not going to do anything to attach it to the door except for glue because it's hollow back there. There's nothing to screw to. So we're just going to rely on the strength of this and that will give it the strength it needs to give it plenty of support. Now I've made some marks here at six inches in so I know where to put these. Okay, I think that basically does it for this, except we have one last step on this one you may or may not have. Um, if you have three hinges, you might have got lucky and you have two right here. This one has none. The door that was in there only had one on the top and one on the bottom. So in that case, we're going to have to route some hinges in here. And if you're following along, we're going to do that next. Thank you.